uh, to the organizers. So I'm going to talk to you today about uh, our recent preliminary results on splittings along a jet shower. So since this is kind of the first talk in this topic, I want to give an introduction to the physics of jet shower structure, what we, what, what we hope to study. So we know that jet evolution vacuum uh, is sort of governed by these two fundamental scales. You have the angle virtuality. You also have a momentum fraction Z. And you can see this cartoon here where the parton shower goes from left to right. And when we do clustering, we typically start from right to left, right? You start with the hadrons. And we utilize some algorithmic structure to translate this, this object of particles to a sort of you know, a, a jet like objects or even subject like objects via the, this the reclustering or declustering techniques. And we hope to study two main points. One, we want to start pro fundamental QCD, such as the evolution in the parton shower, like the virtuality ordering or we want to even look at the Monte Carlo modeling, right? So we want to say, okay, do these models describe data across different center of mass energies, uh, sort of the, the hadronization models? Does it work at RIC? Does it work at LHC? You know, things like this. So what do we want to measure, right? So I try to put it in this kind of cartoon picture here. So the, the key goal, right? We want to translate this intrinsic and essentially unmeasurable parton shower two experimentally accessible observers, right? So we have a parton shower from Pythia. So I just, at random, I asked for a gluon jet of 13 GeV. You see that it goes into six gluons in the shower. And at each time is a gluonic splitting. And for example, I could run another jet and I could get, you know, QQ bar splitting, or I could start with the quark jet example. This, this is just a gluon jet example. And what this ends up at the hadron level is about 12 hadrons, right? You can see here, and when you run your clustering techniques, as you said, you go from right to left, right? And you see this kind of correspondence between the clustering tree and your parton shower. And this is what we sort of exploit in our techniques. And one of the main ones is uh, soft drop, which has uh, been around for a few years now and sort of, uh, in my terms, you know, I think it has sort of uh, revolutionized the field where you take your clustering tree and then you sort of walk backwards, right? So in this case, you've already gone from right to left. So now you go again from left to right. And then you ask at the first splitting, does it pass some criteria, right? In this case, it's a momentum fraction. So the softer one divided by the sum of the two has to be greater than some momentum fraction cut times some angular component to a power beta. So nominally, we set beta to zero, Z cut to 0 0.1, so 10% energy fraction. If it passes, good. If it fails, you remove it. You go on to the one that survives. You call that your first hard split, right? And then at that point, we define two observables, the momentum fraction VG and the opening angle RG, right? The ZG and the RG at the first split, we have already measured in STAR. It came out last year. Uh, you can find the publication here. But today I actually want to talk about extending this, right? So I want to take it to the, essentially I want to increase the dimensionality of the measurement. So there is a measurement that we have done uh, that essentially looked at the correlation of the substructure observables at the first split. So that will be presented by Monica a couple of talks later. So I highly recommend you listen to her talk. But what I'm going to talk about today is dimensionality along the shower, right? So I want to start here, that's my first split. And I want to see as we travel along the shower, how do these observables evolve, right? So this is kind of the evolution of the, of the shower. So this is also in soft drop, kind of extending the procedure, right? This was published a few years ago now where we can you know, do this kind of iterative procedure where we don't stop at the first splitting. Then we, you know, we continue first. So we take the hardest branch and then you keep going. You iteratively apply soft drop and what you end up with is the number of splittings. That is something that you can measure and has been measured. But at each splitting, right, you get a ZG and you get an RG. So at each splitting, you have a momentum scale. Each splitting, you have an angular scale. That's what we're going to measure today. So as you can see, we're, I'm part of STAR. The way we do jet reconstruction in STAR is essentially we use the time projection chamber for our charged particles. We use the barrel electromagnetic calorimeter shown in the kind of gray here for our neutral energy component of our jets. Uh, typically, they are between two, uh, 200 MeV to 30 GeV. 
the lower limit and the upper limit due to the tracking resolution and the tracking efficiency. Uh, the, the data set that I'm going to show results today, it was collected in 2012, proton-proton collision center of mass energy 200 GeV, right? Uh, jet radius is 0.4. Uh, the algorithm that we use to find the jets is anti-KT and we ensure that the full jet exists within our fiducial volume of both the detectors of plus minus one in, in rapidity. So the goal here, right? We wanna measure the splittings along the jet plus spring tree. So I draw this kind of cartoon here. So you have your splittings. Let me call this the first, second, third splitting. What, what can we learn here, right? So this, this sort of enables a study of self-similarity, right? At each splitting, right? So you know that because you have angle ordering in QCD, you're sort of effectively re restricting the available phase space, right? And that kind of turns into this, this virtuality evolution where you start with some high virtual particle and before you end up in, in hadronization, you sequentially, you, you drop off the, the virtuality. So I want to study this in this, in this three-dimensional fashion. So let's say I plot the splitting observable, the VG, right? Here's this, what it looks like for the first split. And let's guess what it looks like for the second and third. Maybe it gets flatter, who knows. But what happens when you look at this in this kind of 3D fashion is you're measuring an observable in time, right? In this case, it's formation time of your split. And we know that if you have a quark that radiates the gluon at a certain angle theta, a certain energy omega, formation time in QCD is sensitive to one over omega theta squared. So as the theta gets smaller, formation time gets larger, right? So you have later collisions, uh, later emissions are sort of more collinear. And that's why, you know, you can kind of study this evolution in time. So there are two ways in which we can study this. We can ask, given a jet momenta, what are the ZG and the RG looking like at the first, second, third splits, right? So the momentum, observable VG or RG split number. So those are your three dimensions of this, of this measurement here. So this is what I call follow a jet, right? So we can compare the distributions at various jet kinematics, but what happens here is you have an indirect handle on the splitting, right? So if you look at a third split at a different jet PT, you might not compare the splittings in a self-similarity case. So that's why we do the second thing, which is given a split momenta, right? So the the prong that initiates the split. So for example, the mother particle here that initiates the split, what about its momentum? Can we classify the splits according to that momentum, right? So this is following a split. And this is now, you know, a direct handle on the splitting kinematics at each stage of your shower, but you have indirect constraint on the jet kinematics. So ideally we want to look at these both, right? So I want to briefly talk about unfolding here and the uh, systematics, the details I'm going to relegate to the backup. So if you have questions, we can discuss it. There's not only finite detector effects and resolution that affect your individual distributions, but you can also alter the hierarchy of your splitting. So let's say I have an example here, particle level jet has two splittings, one and two run through the detector, right? I have a time projection chamber. So I have a finite tracking efficiency. Let's say I lose a particle, right? I reconstruct my jet. If I see where the split is pointing to, say I measure the first split at the detector level here, I have essentially missed one split. So what I call one at the detector level is actually two at the particle level, right? So when I want to present a distribution and call it the first split, I have to correct for this hierarchy mismatch. Same time, you can also get a particle due to, due to detector interactions that comes up here, right? So that's your, now you've identified a, a split that doesn't exist at the particle level. So that's a fake split, right? So not only are the individual observables smeared, the hierarchy is modified. So we correct for this in this kind of three dimensional fashion. Uh, and again, like I said before, the details of that and the systematic uncertainties we assign to that are in the backup. So I'm just going to jump straight into the to the to the results now. So here, so the first time, right? We have shown fully corrected results for the first, second, and third splits as a function of the jet momenta. So we have the ZG at the top panels, the RG in the bottom panels, right? The different colors are the different splits. So the data shown in the in the black markers for the first split, 
red markers for the second split and blue markers for the third split. And the colored regions are the systematic uncertainties associated with that particular measurement. And each of these distributions are normalized to its own integral. So the fact that these are, you know, in the sense, sense self-normalized, you can compare the shape directly. Five minutes. So, five. Yeah, thank you very much. So what do we see here as a function of jet momenta, right? If you compare the ZG, the shape gets flatter as you go to uh, the first, second, and third splits. If you compare jet momenta from left to right, so you have 20 to 30 GeV on the left, 30 to 50 GeV on the right, it, there is a little bit of shape change, but not much, right? It turns out that the deviation that you see between the first, second, third split is also observed in the sort of the opening angle, right? So the ZG effectively becomes flat and the RG becomes very, very narrower. So this is telling us that as you select more and more narrower splits in your jet, and those are typically the third splits, right? That happen further along the shower, the splitting is es es essentially flat. Es essentially the function is random, right? It's, it's like a flat line. You can have high probability uh, of, uh, uh, you know, high momentum splits or low momentum splits as if you're further along the shower. So now let's compare this as a function of the initiator momentum. So the prong that initiates the split. So this is now a true self-similar comparison, right? The only difference being where it's found in the shower. So you see here, if I just flip back and forth, right? The, the points are the same. Uh, I mean, the, the markers, the colors are the same. The only difference is the initiator momentum versus jet momentum in the previous slide. So if I flip back and forth, right? You can see that there is small differences that you observe in the ZG that are significant. For example, look at the red markers in the top panel. They become significantly steeper as you plot this distribution as a function of the initiator momentum. And you can look at the RG, for example. So let's look at the red markers in the bottom panel. They are roughly the same, right? There's, there's a little bit of difference that you kind of observe here, but the the available phase space for the radiation is roughly the same, but you're selecting a higher momentum and that results in a sort of asymmetric splitting. So we have sort of observed this in the 3D fashion that you can't observe if you're just plotting it in 2D. So we also show some comparisons with Monte Carlo. Here uh, we compared to three different models. So this is Pythia 6 in the solid marker compared in the solid line compared to, uh, uh, so this is a star tune, right? And then we also have a Pythia eight in the dashed line, we have Hervig in the dotted lines, and these are LHC tuned. So they're not tuned to Rick Energy, it's just sort of straight out of the box. So we, we already saw in like the, the paper that we already published for the first split that Pythia 6 describes the data reasonably well, but Pythia 8 and Hervig, they kind of mishmash, right? They, the, for the RG, Pythia 8 predicts a larger value that you can see here at the first split. And, and Hervig kind of does reasonably okay. Uh, and what we see here, right? They, they sort of models overall describe the trend of this narrowing that we saw in the data, especially as you go to higher splits. And the availability of this, this kind of phase space uh, for each and every splitting, right? So that depends not only on like the jet momenta, but it also depends on where you are, right? So what I'm trying to say here, look at the second splitting on the left hand on the right hand side, there's red markers, the meet the the kind of the peak value, right? There's something like less than 0.1. If you compare the third splitting at a slightly lower initiator prong, you have you find the same peak position, right? So this is telling you that there's this kind of self-similarity, but it depends on where you are in the shower. Again, the same thing as a function of the ZG shown here. Uh, we see differences at the first split, uh, a sort of Interesting consequence here is this: the flattening is also shown in the Monte Carlo, but the differences becomes rather small, kind of disappear within our systematics as we go to the second and the third splits. And this is quite interesting, right? Because at this point, you're essentially in the kind of non-perturbative part of your shower, and this kind of hadronization effects are are quite large. So that brings me to the conclusion of my talk. I want to leave you with a couple of points uh, that. Uh, the jet substructure program at STAR is sort of robust. And the goal that we want to do is sort of map jet evolution at Rick Energy. There, there are multiple reasons why we want to do this, right? It's a pure QCD study, but also we want to look at it 
in the presence of a heavy ion event where you have significant other effects. So what we observe for the first time, right, is this gradual variation in the available phase space. So we see this kind of virtuality evolution in a jet in time. And we observe this kind of significantly harder sort of symmetric splittings as you're further along the jet, like in the third split. Those are the most collinear. Uh, and I think this is effectively the first measurement never shown, like RIC or LHC, that distinguishes experimental quantities in a time scale. And like I said before, this is extremely useful in a, in a heavy ion environment where you have concurrent evolution of the jet and plasma. So if, you're, if you have a fully corrected you know, split hierarchy corrected distribution, we can study the modifications in the medium at the first versus the second versus the third, where you have different medium that these things are going through, right? So in the final results, we, we will delve deeper into the comparisons and in, in the final publication, we will look at various handles in the Monte Carlo, hadronization, shower, tune variations, how does that affect the, the distribution? And also I really want to show kind of comparison with, the, with our uh, uh, you know, theory calculations kind of highlight the feasibility of these calculations as we go to very small scales that are almost like you know, at the order of lambda QCD here. So that's why I want to finally leave you with the take home message. Subjects at RIC allow for essentially disentangling of this perturbative and non-perturbative dynamics, perturbative, non-perturbative in a single jet and this kind of multi-scale process. And they allow us to get very close to the scales that have never been seen before. So that's all, thank you very much. Thank you, Hagav. Uh, thank you for this very nice talk. Is there any questions? Uh, I see. Well, I can start actually with one. Sorry, you mentioned at the beginning that you have charge plus neutral jets. Yeah. Uh, do you have any cuts on the RG for this uh, to? Because your distributions go up to very low RG. Yeah, we actually so go to very low. The the uh, the 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 tower resolution in star is 0 0.05. So that's oh, the, okay. the, that's the size of the tower. So that's essentially our first bin here. Okay. You can see, and the uncertainties are quite large in the RG, is particularly for the for the tower energy scale that happened at the very small bin. But we still measure down to that because the majority of our you know, jet constituents are tracks. So that ends up helping out when we want to measure these kind of substructure observables. I see, okay, thanks. Uh, we still have a couple of minutes for questions. Uh, Will, you had a question? Super, thank you. Um, I'm curious, what are the prospects for this measurement at LHC, positive and negative? Thank you. So, right, so we are kind of nice in terms of the kinematics here, right? Because at low PT, your jets are sort of broad. You can already see how wide the distribution is, right? So you have lots of avail availability of the phase space in order to select different regions of R. But when you do this at the LHC, your jets are already narrow to start with. They have a broad distribution Right. For example, I can see at least doing this down to you know same 20 GeV. They could definitely do it. Uh, but you know, when you want to talk about when you go to very high momenta jets like a TeV jet, like you see this in the Atlas uh, measurement of the Lund plane, they can show this right for different uh, regions, but they bin it differently in terms of log one over R, and that you can have a different. But they essentially mainly focused on the narrow part. And I think we'll we will hear about this, but not separated out in splits, but in the Lund plane later on today. Thanks. Uh, any last pressing uh, question? Last minute pressing question? No. Okay. If not, thanks a lot, Hagaf. Thank you. Uh, do we move to our next speaker, uh, Michael Fuchil? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Can you share your slides? Yes, I'm trying to. Okay. Read. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Yeah. So we yeah. can see it. Thank you. Yes. So, so sorry, I'm trying to remove this. Okay. Can you see the slide? Yes. 
perfectly. Okay. Thank you. Ah, so 15 uh, minutes, <laughs> I will give you last uh, five minutes warning, okay? Okay, thanks. Thank right. Okay, first of all, let me thank uh, hello everyone, and uh, let me thank the convener for uh, the possibility to present uh, DIS. As you can see, uh, I will talk about um, uh, production of um, uh, EV jet in association with a light jet in the context of uh, hybrid high energy collinear factorization. Um, first of all, I would like to give you some. Um, brief introduction about the general framework that is the BFK resummation and the possibility to construct an hybrid collinear energy factorization approach. And in the second part of the talk, I would like to move to the EV flavor production. So production of EV jets and uh, most in general, so bound states. So as we know, EV flavor at emission are recognized as an excellent channel to test uh, quantum chromodynamics due to the smallness of the coupling. And uh, this result in um, great interest, both from uh, formal aspect and uh, phenomenological point of view. Uh, but as we know, at Modern Collider, uh, EV flavor production can enter uh, in new scales regime, like uh, the one which characterizes uh, semi hard processes in which uh, the center of mass uh, energy is much larger than the typical scale of the process. That is clearly the mass of the EV quarks, which uh, from the other side is much larger than the lambda HCD square. And uh, in this condition, there are uh, large energy logs in the perturbative series that the, uh, which can spoil the perturbative behavior of our prediction. Uh, so we need, uh, in general, a resummation pole order that takes into account the effect of these logs. And uh, actually, the most general framework for this resummation is the baliski fadin priegel path approach that um, uh, up to now allows to resum um, in the leading logarithm approximation, but also in the next leading logarithm approximation. And uh, it can be applied essentially for phenomenology in two contexts. In general, when uh, we deal with semi-art processes, every amplitude, and so in general, uh, every cross-section, partonic cross-section, in which uh, the um, vacuum quantum number are exchanged in the T-channel, are uh, in which, uh, sorry, the gluon quantum number are exchanged in the T-channel in the regi kinematical region, are dominated by BFKL. And so we need a resummation at the level of the partonic cross-section, an all-order resummation that takes into account the effect of these logs. It also governs the evolution of the unintegrated bone density. In this case, uh, in, when we go in uh, a regime in which uh, the um, Bjorken variable X is very small, we need a more general description of, uh, of parts and distribution function. And in the um, IKT regime, this, um, this, pretty, um, this distribution is provided by the so-called unintegrated bone density that is governed by the BFKL equation. Uh, in my talk, I will focus on a um, region of uh, small uh, of moderate X value. And I will show how to construct an hybrid formalism in which one can uh, actually resum BFKL uh, logs at the level of the partonic cross section and include it in a standard collinear factorization in order to get uh, um, a resumed cross section. And um, this uh, kind of formalism has been constructed the first time for Mueller Naval Jet. So, production of two light jets, uh, which are large separated in rapidity and which uh, features also, which possess large PT. This, uh, the, the interesting thing is that uh, this hybrid formalism, it's uh, very general and can be extended to several types of semi hard reaction. So um, what is the reason to extend these studies uh, and to move from Mueller Naval to other kind of production? The point is essentially that um, uh, prediction for Mueller Naval jet uh, can be compared with, um, um, with the experimental analysis that has been performed at CMS at an energies of 7 TV and using uh, symmetric PT ranges. But uh, this analysis shows how, um, how we are in a um, sort of um, intermediate domain that is described uh, uh, both by BFKL and the GLAP approaches. So we, we don't have a clear manifestation of eigenergy effects. And to get 
a clearer manifestation of eigenenergy effect, or we have to go to higher energy and uh, or uh, clearly higher difference of rapidity of the two type of jet, or we need to look uh, uh, to more exclusive final state as well as more sensitive observable. There is also another problem associated with the phenomenology of jet of Müller Navelli, uh, and this is related to strong manifestation of higher order instability via scale variation. In general, prediction are very unstable because uh, next to leading BFKL correction are large and uh, uh, have uh, opposite sign with respect to leading order. And so in general, this call for some optimization of the procedure like the um, BLM one. But uh, when one implement this uh, BLM optimization, one obtains uh, um, a sort of uh, a scale that is the optimization scale to mimic the most relevant solid in terms. And this scale is, uh, in the case of Müller Navet, very far from the typical natural scale of the processes. So uh, the community started to consider Müller Navet jet production, first uh, constructing the NLO jet vertex, and then uh, considering typical BFKL observable as a zimutal correlation in fuel and NLA approach. And then uh, also the hadron hadron production, but basically the ingredients that enters in the Mueller Navali jet are similar to the one that enter in the hadrons at a partonic level and uh, reveals uh, same kind of instability and same features. So uh, community started to consider a different kind of reaction in which, uh, for instance, there's more jet are involved. So more uh, exclusive processes like free and for jet or drill yan. And uh, my group uh, actually is interested also in uh, production of X, X plus jet that uh, has been done in a partial next leading approximation and that we are trying to, gen um, to generalize to next leading in next leading approximation. But what about EV flavor? We can use EV flavor to study BFKL. Actually, we can do in a partial uh, NLA approximation because uh, we constructed the gluon uh, impact factor for the production of EV quarks and also a um, photon. Uh, in Uh, uh, impact factor has been calculated in the KT space and projected onto the um, um, leading order BFKL again function. And so the, this uh, allows us to construct some partial NLA predictions for some processes. And for instance, we considered uh, the production of a um, uh, big work jet in the final state in association with a light jet. So a process which is in, in some sense inspired to the um, Mueller Navelli, but in which one jet is, uh, one light jet is removed and uh, we inserted uh, an EV jet. In this case, to factorize the hadronic cross section, we use the standard collinear approach. But in this case, the, um, we have a convolution between part on distribution function and uh, uh, an earth cross section. But in this case, the earth cross section is not a fixed order cross section, but it is uh, actually a BFKL resumed cross section, which is uh, factorized in the context of KT factorization as the convolution in transverse momenta between the um, vertex for producing a jet and the vertex from producing uh, the EV quarks and in general, the BFKL green function. Uh, at the end, we can express the um, cross-section as differential in uh, rapidities and in the modulus of transverse momenta and in the um, azimuthal angles and express this as an expansion in the so-called unintegrated azimuthal coefficients in which uh, we incorporate the PDFs, uh, the resummation of logs uh, that is uh, incorporated in um, this term. If one uh, perform an expansion, can see all the, there is a mission to all order of blocks of energy divided for a suitable scale. And, the, and clearly the impact factor and some universal correction to impact factor that, that can be included uh, all, um, even without calculating them uh, up to the next leading order. From this, one can define azimuthal angle coefficients integrated, so integrated in some ranges of the PT and in some ranges of rapidity, imposing some difference uh, of rapidity between the two target, target, target objects, and um, actually constructed some um, phenomenological observable, like uh, C0 as a function of the difference of rapidity. C0 represent, it's clearly seen from this expansion that it represents the cross section summed over the azimuthal angles. And uh, the nice feature of this analysis with respect to Muller-Navelet is that uh, even if we work at natural scales, 
uh, like the transverse mass of the um, of the EV work that we are trying to tag. Uh, there is uh, um, a, a great effect of stabilization with respect to Mueller Navale that it's very uh, evident in the case of uh, the cross section C0. We can also study other uh, observable, like uh, the so called azimuthal coefficients, the ratio between uh, azimuthal coefficients. For instance, here there is C1 and C0 that represent the mean value of the angle between uh, phi quark, phi jet, and minus pi. And, uh, this reveals uh, a clear BFKL behavior, so uh, the correlation uh, when uh, the rapidity increase. But uh, in this case, because this observable is very sensitive to the energy dynamic, there is there, there are still some some instability in the um, in the observable. There are also other observables that can be constructed for this um, from the general expression of the cross section, and one is the uh, PT uh, distribution of the quark. In this case, I we can. Yes, thanks. Uh, we can see um, the PT distribution of the EV quarks uh, at fixed rapidity. And we can see that in the region we expect BFKL to be valid, that is almost this region, the uncertainties of NLA prediction are uh, few, and uh, it basically gives an overlap with the leading prediction. This behavior changed a bit when, uh, but it's almost the same, but uh, when we increase the energy, we become more sensitive to the energy dynamics. And um, the overlap is not clear from this um, from this second graph. We can also study the azimuthal distribution, so the cross section as a function of the angle, and uh, we can see also here in a clear way the, um, the the correlation. When we increase the rapidity, essentially the amount of gluon radiation in the central rapidity, so the remnant X uh, becomes more and more, and so uh, the two uh, objects start to decorrelate. So. Um, the distribution for fuel rapidity is peaked on zero. So these two objects are back to back and they, when we increase the rapidity, they started to um, decorrelate. And uh, what is also interesting as an outlook is uh, trying to consider uh, an extension starting from uh, jet and moving to um, bound states. In this context, it is obviously important to consider the appropriate flavor number scheme in the case in which we use uh, clearly a calculation with which uh, fixed the mass is different from zero. We have to use fixed flavor number scheme. And in the case in which we work with the massless uh, impact factor, instead we have to consider zero mass flavor number scheme. And clearly one can try to construct a general mass flavor number scheme also in this context, uh, which has to be a match between the two. And uh, uh, with the, this purpose, we consider a double dimension production in which uh, clearly one can uh, construct an impact factor, uh, essentially integrating uh, the, the partonic impact factor with a fragmentation function. And in this case, in the fixed flavor number scheme, one has to integrate this with um, some uh, non-perturbative fragmentation function. There are several models that are based on very different ideas, like uh, perturbative QCD fragmentation models uh, in uh, EV-quark effective field theory, string atonization models, and models inspired by grip of Lipatova reciprocity. And um, this kind of production can also be considered in the context, uh, in the IPT regime, in the context of zero mass variable flavor number scheme. In this case, it can be considered up to next to leading logarithm approximation because the light part and impact factor are known in the next to leading order. And so with a convolution with a suitable fragmentation function, one can obtain uh, EV mass on NLO impact factors. And uh, an interesting feature is that uh, also in this case, we have some preliminary plots in which uh, we can see an effect of stabilization. Even without, uh, in, um, in the left panel, you see there is no uh, implementation of BLM procedure, but uh, there is a form of stabilization uh, using different uh, models uh, provided by some collaboration of uh, EV quark fragmentation function. As an outlook, but I think I have no time to discuss it uh, in details, uh, one can also consider the GFSI production. It has been, uh, the basic theoretical framework has been constructed in a paper by the French group in 2019. And the uh, leading order GFSI impact factor has been constructed both in the context of non-relativistic QCD and color evaporation models. And uh, a first preliminary analysis revealed that uh, there is a, with the realistic CMS and custom rapidity range, there is a sizable cross-section that can be investigated. So uh, I, I have um, 
to my conclusion, if you flavor the mission, uh, promise fine channel to test uh, quantum chromodynamics in the semi hard regime because they provide uh, us with a natural uh, stability for the BFKL series. Uh, up to now, we are uh, able to include uh, uh, partial NLI effects because uh, we can calculate impact factor in the, in the leading Lorentz approximation. But in the future, we can try to extend this study to the full MLA case. Clearly, early efforts um, has been made to shift the attention to bound states. And uh, what is interesting is that uh, BFKL, on the contrary, can provide us with um, a tool to investigate EV flavor production in a wider kinematical range. So as an outlook, um, we think that uh, clearly there should be other phenomenological analysis of bound state, like the stars, JPSI. And uh, also from the theoretical point of view, it's very important to include uh, some subletic correction to input factors to produce full NLA predictions. Um, another uh, interesting possibility is to consider single free EV flavor jet production and uh, in introducing a small X transverse momentum dependent gluon distribution. But clearly this is uh, another field. So thank you for the attention. Thank you, Marcel, for being extremely timely and for this very nice talk. So if uh, we have plenty of time for questions, if you have a question, please raise your hand or just write something in the chat. Uh, so let's start with Will. Um, super. Thank you. That was a, a really interesting talk. And I don't want to monopolize a question session, but I actually have uh, several. I think the, the most pressing question for me is, um, I'm used to heavy flavor production through um, uh, FONLL, FONL, uh, where I understand they're doing, again, a, a resummation in energy with large logs from soft emission. And I'm wondering how your, uh, your, your sort of methodology compares to that, and if there's a, one can compare to those results. And I'm guessing the, the difficulty is that you assume a large rapidity gap and that that is not the case for FONL. Thank you. Um... Yes, clearly there is. Um, so yes, we assume a large rapidity gap, and clearly, uh, it is. This is uh, actually there are no, uh, I think, uh, analysis that can be directly compared in the case of EV flavor production. There is only some analysis for Mueller Navelli. Uh, obviously, the, the much more difficult is, uh, I think, to get uh, some um, rapidity ranges of this type. Okay, super. Well, this actually um, comes to the second question I had precisely on this slide, which was, um, it looks like the, the next leading analysis that you did leads to larger uncertainties than the, the leading result. Uh, am I understanding that correctly? Uh, in which cases? Because, okay, for C0 or for C1 on C0? Uh, yeah, for the lower plots, for sure. It's, it's easy to see that the red is yes, much in, than blue. in this case, yes, it, it gives to a large uncertainty band. Uh, um, I think that uh, this is basically due to the fact that, uh, as, as I told, that these are very sensitive to the um, uh, to the BFKL dynamics, no, and uh, because we have um, essentially a large correction with opposite sign, and this this observable is very sensitive to this instability that are uh, included in the, in the theoretical framework because they, they, they are intrinsic in the BFKL green functions. So this observable is the, um, I want to say, the, the most unstable under correction because it's the more sensitive to that one. Okay, thank you. And then the very last thing that I had was, um, uh, is there any data that you can compare your predictions to? Thank you. Oof. I am um, actually for a EV flavor. I don't think so because uh, the old the old analysis I know are uh, at least uh, from now is uh, one from CMS collaboration for Mueller Naval Agent. Essentially, the experimental community focused uh, its attention up to now only on this kind of uh, processes, but. Uh, we hope that in a future, uh, this is this was um, like the, the scope of this talk that we can consider other kind of uh, forward backward or uh, forward production, and also to consider different reaction because uh, there are other type of reaction that uh, you you can see as have uh, some advantages like the stability of the higher order corrections that cannot be reached with the uh, light jet. 
Wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, any further question? Okay, I don't see any. So thank you once again, Michael, for this very nice talk. Thank you. And in that case, we go to the next speaker, Monica Robotka. Um, yes, hello. Hi. Can you okay, try to share your share slides? One. Yeah, yeah. Oops. Okay, I hope you see my slides. I will go to full screen. Perfect. Okay, okay, can you see them? Yeah, perfectly. So 15 minutes and I'll give you a warning at the uh, last five, okay? Okay, thanks. Uh, so hello, everybody. Uh, let me first uh, thank to the organizers uh, for the opportunity to um, present here. Uh, I would like to speak about differential measurements of uh, jet substructure observables and their correlation in pro proton proton collisions at uh, 200 uh, GV in a star. Uh, so just a few words about the jets. Uh, jets are collimated sprays of hadrons and uh, we use the algorithms to define them. Uh, most important uh, algorithms for our analysis are NTKT algorithm, which starts the clustering from the particles with uh, highest uh, PT, and uh, CA algorithm, uh, where uh, the particles are clustered based on angular uh, separation. Uh, so, uh, at present, the jet substructure is being uh, increasingly studied and uh, when we want to study the jet substructure, uh, we need to use a grooming technique uh, called soft drop. Um, so, uh, Raghav talked about uh, the soft drop uh, uh, in his talk, so just a brief reminder. Uh, this technique is... Um, based on uh, removing soft white angle radiation and it connects uh, parton shower and angular tree. It has uh, several steps uh, and we broke uh, jet into uh, two subjects and uh, um, uh, we uh, have our final subjects uh, when uh, they pass the soft drop condition, which you can see here on the right. And the products of this uh, soft drop uh, process are observable uh, shared momentum fraction, ZG, and uh, groomed uh, radius, RG. Uh, these, are, uh, these two observables are, that are the observables that we are focusing on in uh, our analysis. Uh, so, uh, about motivation, uh, the measurement of a uh, jet substructure is a good tool uh, for studying uh, QCD, uh, which means that uh, we want to look how the parton shower evolves. And uh, this parton shower is described by momentum scale and uh, angular scale. Uh, so far, these two scales were measured independently uh, via observable ZG and RG, and um, results uh, published results from this measurement uh, from star you can see in the plots on the right. Um, in the top, you can see the ZG distributions for different uh, PT bands 15 to 20 and uh, 20 to 25, and uh, compared with uh, some uh, Monte Carlo simulations. And uh, in the bottom plots, you can see uh, RG distributions, uh, again, from the for the um, PT uh, intervals 15 to 20 and 20 to 25. Uh, so uh, we know that uh, these two observables are not uh, independent and uh, our goal is to study uh, the correlation between them as a function of uh, jet PT. And uh, how we do that, uh, you can see on this uh, cartoon in the bottom of the slide, uh, we have um, here a uh, ZGRG plot, uh, and uh, we study the ZG distributions uh, via um, RG uh, for uh, free uh, RG bins. Here you can see them. Uh, okay, so uh, in the previous ATLAS measurement, um, 
there were uh, significant differences in uh, varying hadronization models uh, at uh, uh, high jet PT. Uh, you can see uh, the plot uh, on the right that uh, the measured data uh, quite differ from the uh, Monte Carlo simulations. And uh, we want to study this uh, at uh, lower jet PT in a star uh, where non-perturbative effects are expected to be larger. Uh, in Atlas, uh, they used a uh, lunge jet plane, um, uh, which is a um, uh, 2D space, uh, uh, momentum angular space. space uh, and uh, uh, when we want to look at the distribution, we uh, slice this uh, space. And uh, so the lunge jet plane integrates over all splits, but uh, we want to focus in our analysis only on the first split. Uh, so just a few words about the STAR experiment. Uh, you can see the illustration of the STAR detectors on the uh, right. Uh, most important detectors uh, for our analysis are TPC, time projection chamber, uh, where charged particles are reconstructed, and uh, barrel electromagnetic calorimeter, uh, where the uh, neutral component uh, of the jets uh, is reconstructed. Um, so our data uh, were measured by experiment STAR in 2012 in proton-proton collisions at 200 GV. We analyzed uh, about uh, 11 million events. And um, uh, as I said uh, above, we, for the jet reconstruction, we used NTKT algorithm and uh, CA algorithm. Um, we look on the jets uh, with transverse momenta between 15 and 40 GV. And uh, for analysis, uh, we use uh, two different resolution parameters, 0 0.4 and 0 0.6. And uh, in the soft drop condition, we set the parameters Zika to uh, 0 0.1 and Beta to uh, 0. Uh, so since uh, measurement is uh, affected by uh, finite efficiency and resolution of the detector, uh, we need to deconvolve this detector effect and uh, obtain particle level distribution. Our results are in uh, 3D, so this means we also need to uh, do the correction for jet PT. Uh, for this correction, uh, we use uh, PT response metrics, which you can see on the right, uh, where on uh, Y axis is a detector level jet PT and on uh, X axis is a particle level jet PT. We do this correction uh, separately for each uh, particle level bin. Uh, so this means we choose uh, um, particle level uh, jet PT bin and uh, do the projection into detector level jet PT. And uh, from each uh, bin of this projection, uh, we take uh, the uh, weights. Uh, then we unfold the ZG versus RG spectra using uh, 2D Bayesian unfolding. And uh, we unfold them separately for each uh, detector level bin. And then uh, when we have these unfolded spectra, uh, we uh, weighted them um, using the weights uh, from the projection and uh, then we summed this spectra. Uh, in the end, uh, the additional correction for uh, trigger missed events and uh, unmatched uh, events uh, must uh, be done. Uh, so let's move to the systematic uncertainties estimation. Um, in our analysis, we estimate uh, the systematics by varying uh, detector response. Um, we estimate these uh, corrections. Uh, first, the hadronic correction. Uh, that means we uh, vary the um, track momentum subtracted from the uh, tower energy. Also, the uh, tower scale variation is based on uh, that we vary uh, tower gain by 3.8%, uh, and uh, track efficiency, where we uh, vary uh, efficiency by 4%. Uh, also, we need to do um, uh, we need to estimate systematics for the unfolding uh, when we uh, change the iterative parameter from four to six. Um, we uh, still need to do one 
systematic uncertainty and uh, this is systematic due to the prior shape variation and uh, it will be uh, included in our uh, final publication. Uh, in the plots in the bottom you can see uh, the contributions from each systematics uh, for the ZG spectra. Uh, you can see three plots for different three RG bins. Uh, first is zero uh, from zero to zero point fifteen. Second is from zero point fifteen to zero zero point thirty, and the uh, last one is zero point thirty to zero point forty. Uh, this is for uh, JetPT between twenty and twenty five GB and the uh, resolution parameter zero point four. Uh, as you can see, the uh, largest contributions is uh, from uh, hadronic correction and uh, unfolding. And uh, you can see that in the middle is uh, the uncertainty uh, about 5%, uh, but uh, in the edges it is about uh, 10%. Uh, okay, so this brings me to uh, our results. Uh, so. On this slide, you can see unfolded ZG distributions uh, for jets between 20 and 25 GV with resolution parameter 0.4. And uh, you can see three curves uh, for three different RG bin. Uh, uh, the blue one is uh, 0 to 0.15, red one is 0.15 to 0.30, and uh, black one is 0.30 to 0.40. Uh, as you can minutes. see, uh, okay, thanks. As you can see, um, the cartoon uh, from the in the cartoon from the um, previous slide, uh, each curve in this plot uh, corresponds to the one line in in this uh, cartoon, and uh, you can also see that uh, when we go from uh, small to large RG, uh, so we move from collinear hard splitting to softer white angle radiation. Uh, you uh, could see a similar plot in uh, Ragav's talk, uh, but um, in his talk, uh, this uh, curve uh, was from the different uh, splitting. But uh, in my uh, analysis, I focus only on the first splitting and change the RG. Okay, so in the next slide, there's a comparison for um, two different resolution parameters, 0.4 on the left and 0.6 on the right. Uh, also, uh, we show the jets uh, between 20 and 25 GV, uh, and uh, there are two different uh, RG uh, bins. Uh, as you can see, uh, there's a no significant uh, change of the distributions uh, when we uh, change the resolution parameter. Okay, and uh, the, another comparison is for uh, different uh, PT bins. Uh, on the first plot is, um, uh, on the top left is uh, jet PT uh, 15 to 20, on the top right is uh, 20 to 25, uh, bottom left is 25 to 30, and uh, bottom right is uh, 30 to 40. Uh, you can see that uh, when we move from um, lower to higher, uh, JetPT, uh, the distributions uh, become steeper, uh, but um, uh, still uh, change uh, really mildly with varying uh, PT. So this means the RG is here uh, the driving factor. Uh, okay, I have also the comparison with Monte Carlo models uh, for um, uh, JetPT 20 to 25, also from uh, again for uh, three different RG uh, bins. And uh, you can see we use the Monte Carlo simulators PTA6, PTA8, and Herrick 7. And uh, all of these uh, MC models describe the observed data. Um, we want to, in the future, study the impact of perturbative and non-perturbative models in the Monte Carlo simulations. Uh, so this brings me to the summary. Uh, we uh, shown the first measurement of uh, ZG versus RG as a function of JetPT. Uh, we also shown the um, multidimensional unfolding. And um, as we can see, uh, the ZG has a big dependence on a JetPT and strong dependence on a RG. So this means that we can select significantly softer splits uh, by selecting wider angle splits.
And uh, in the next steps, um, as I uh, said in the previous slide, uh, we want to compare uh, data with different Monte Carlo models and uh, theoretical calculations, uh, use different hadronization and parton shower models. Uh, we are also working on um, other substructure observables, uh, namely uh, splitting scale KT and uh, groomed, mass, uh, groomed mass fraction mu. Uh, but these observables uh, wasn't shown in this weren't shown in this presentation. And uh, we are also exploring uh, other unfolding methods, uh, uh, for example, machine learning technique uh, omnifold. Okay, so this is my very last slide. Uh, here you can see the comparison from uh, results from my talk uh, on the left and uh, from Ragav talk uh, on the right. Uh, you can see that uh, plots uh, look um, almost the uh, same, uh, but uh, as I mentioned on my uh, previous slide, uh, we use uh, uh, different um, analysis for these plots. So uh, yeah, this is, um, uh, all from me, thank you for your attention. Thank you, Monica, for this very clear talk and for being extremely timely. Uh, we have uh, several minutes for, for questions. So please uh, raise your hands or just write in the chat. So perhaps I can start. So. When you mentioned the, the sensitivity to non-perturbative effects, uh, are you planning to use alone the, the ZG measurements or are you planning to correlate with the, with the ground mass? Because in the ground mass is where we see most of the differences between the Monte Carlos. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we plan to uh, use uh, ground mass. And uh, are these for, uh, what is the time scale if I can ask? <laughs> For, to, for these results? Uh, well, uh, it's a maybe, hard one. Yeah, yeah. Haga, you have maybe to yeah, answer. Maybe I can take that. So the, we, I mean, so the point is we've shown in Monica's talk that we can do this in 3D and we can do any observable, right? So we can do ZG versus groom mass, for example, or RG versus groom mass. And in both cases, you know, the, the, the final result will, you know, will come in a publication towards the end of the year. So okay. if you have any requests, Liliana, you know, feel free to le let us know what you want to see and we can do it. <laughs> okay, so perhaps in the meantime, while no more questions arrive, I can ask, so are you planning to use other uh, clustering sequences other than cambridge Chaham, for instance, for heavy ion studies? Uh Mm, it's a question on me, actually, or on <laughs> Ragov. Well, in this, on these studies, on the jet plotting function. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I think we didn't discuss it. I, uh, I think we uh, we want to use only this uh, uh, CA, but uh, maybe we can use anything else. Yeah. So I can just respond to that very briefly. So for PP, I think the Cambridge Aachen works very well. Right, there's a there's a nice correspondence with the with the with the angle ordering, but for the heavy ions, uh, we are interested in looking at not only uh, this this selection of the of the Cambridge Aachen, but also with different parameters. Like you're very familiar with this, uh, you know, the the thing that you introduced with the tau reclustering, or even using subjects, both of which are much more robust in the presence of the background. Okay. Thanks. Any other questions, comments? Okay, if not, thank you once again, Monica, for this very nice talk. Thank you. And we can then move to our next speaker. So, Kyuni, yes. Hello. Hello. So, if you could, yeah, perfect. That's perfect. So again, 15 minutes, I will give you a warning at the last five, okay? So um, 
Thank you very much. Uh, I, I, will, uh, I, I will be talking about um, studying heteronization at uh, LHCB um, in this talk. So um, heteronization is a, um, a active area research of research at LHCB. Um, there are uh, many on, ongoing uh, analyses, including uh, fragmentation functions, looking at light quark initiated jets, heavy quark initiated jets, and also look at the uh, flavor dependence in the final state headwinds. We are also um, doing the multi-particle correlations with, uh, within jets, uh, transverse momentum dependent fragmentation functions via um, spontaneous hyper and polarization. And lastly, uh, there's also corconium uh, formation uh, studies looking at the JSI and Upsilon family um, to uh, uh, investigate the uh, production and um, the polarization mechanisms. Um, and also most recently, uh, we've uh, started uh, look, um, looking at the distributions within the jets. And this, this talk will be uh, mostly focusing on the first and the last um, items uh, that uh, uses uh, jets as, as uh, important tools. So um, what is heterogenization? Uh, if, we, if we look at this uh, Monte Carlo generator repre representation of the proton-proton um, collisions um, at high energy, uh, there are two incoming protons and um, the uh, two stroke uh, quirks uh, that uh, go through the hard scattering. And before and, and uh, after the uh, hard scattering, um, there's also in, uh, the part, the uh, radi uh, radiation of gluons um, uh, and, and the, uh, the outgoing partons uh, go through a parton shower and uh, 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 forms hadrons uh, at, the, at the end. And subsequently they also decay. Um, there's also uh, beam remnants and underlying events um, the, that uh, uh, in, in, in includes the multi multi-parton uh, interactions and soft uh, radiations. Um, they also uh, create uh, hadrons. Uh, in uh, in the uh, hard scat hard scattering that uh, that we are interested in, uh, the the hadron formation uh, is uh, represented by the fragmentation functions in this. Uh, collinear uh, PQCD factorization. And uh, the, the fragmentation function is uh, non-perturbative and universal. And uh, if we uh, also, also uh, think about the uh, in single inclusive jet production, uh, the in, in this uh, PQCD, PQCD factorization, the jet, uh, it, it is uh, represented by the jet function, which is uh, perturbatively calculable uh, because of the uh, finiteness of the, uh, the jet radius r. And so uh, most recently there has been a, a theoretical uh, development that allows us to uh, look at the uh, look inside the jets. Um, so there's a sub -subs, a jet substructure uh, variables um, such as say, angularity, uh, fragmentation functions and uh, fragmentation jet function and transverse momentum dependent on jet frag fragmenting jet function. And these uh, jet substructure variables are um, embedded in, uh, in, in this uh, new, ob new object called um, jet substructure function uh, in, within this uh, new uh, jet substructure factorization scheme. So uh, what we are interested in is uh, mostly uh, the, this, uh, this uh, TMD fragmenting jet function. And so TMD uh, means uh, transverse momentum dependent. Uh, we are uh, looking. We look at the collinear as well as a transverse uh, protonic uh, motion inside the inside the proton. So I would uh, switch the gear and uh, introduce a little bit about the TMD physics. Um, so the the beginning of the TMD physics uh, started with this uh, uh, observable uh, single spin uh, transverse uh, transverse single spin asymmetry AN. Basically, you have uh, you are looking at the left to right uh, asymmetry of the uh, final state uh, particles in in the proton-proton uh, collisions where uh, one of the uh, proton uh, is uh, polarized. So purely uh, the perturbative considerations of the um, of the, the the theory prediction. Uh, told us that it would the asymmetry will be very small suppressed by um, a hard scale and uh, proportional to the uh, quark mass. But uh, over the past uh, 
50 years or so, we've been uh, consistently seeing a very large um, asymmetry um, with the increasing uh, XF. And so uh, th there has been uh, basically two approaches to um, uh, describe this uh, phenomena. And uh, first is the collinear twist three, where uh, we only require a um, single uh, hard scale. Uh, these are uh, only uh, suitable for uh, uh, these uh, observables. Um, what's more uh, relevant for, for us is that this uh, TMD uh, framework where uh, there are two scales uh, required, hard scale and, and soft scale, and they are suitable for single uh, semi-inclusive DIS, uh, Drel Drelian, WZ, and uh, most importantly, uh, hadrons in, in jets. And so one of the examples of the TMD uh, PDFs is the uh, Sievers function, where uh, this function is uh, sensitive to orbital angular momentum. Um, and uh, it, so this, this new frame uh, has uh, this uh, new function has this uh, transverse uh, protonic momentum. And so it requires uh, different uh, factorization. Uh, so uh, I, I, it, tomorrow there will be a Jordan Ross talk about a test of TMD or factorization uh, breaking. I encourage the, encourage the audience to um, uh, listen to this talk. And so I've uh, also, uh, only mentioned the uh, Sievers function. Um, there's also uh, other kinds of uh, TMD PDFs, uh, depending on the uh, polarization of the nucleon or the, uh, the quarks. So uh, this particular function called uh, for Mulder's function uh, is uh, sensitive to quark uh, spin momentum correlation. And it, this can be measured uh, via Trillian angular angular distribution at a low PT, uh, which, is, which is being uh, uh, done at LHCb. Um, the, the TMD uh, fragmentation functions uh, can be analogously um, defined. Um, and uh, just before we go to um, fragmentation function, just wanted to mention another uh, uh, measurements uh, that uh, have been done at LHCb that contributed to uh, the uh, constraining the unpolarized uh, core P TMD PDF. So the C production uh, measured at LHCb um, uh, he, uh, shown as in the left plot, um, uh, as shown in the on the left plot, um, it reaches a small X region of the TMD PDF and uh, it is sensitive to the unpolarized core P, uh, TMD PDF. And the results um, uh, uh, for the uh, 7, 8, and 13 TV have been used for the recent uh, global fit of the uh, TMD PDF. You can see uh, uh, the, uh, one of the fit uh, results uh, on, the, on the right hand side. And so now uh, moving on to the uh, TMD fragmentation function. So uh, traditionally, uh, the uh, Fragmentation functions are uh, very well measured um, at uh, E plus E minus uh, experiment uh, shown here um, as a D1H. Um, uh, collinear, uh, traditional collinear uh, fragmentation function would only uh, take into account uh, the C, but a Bell uh, experiment recently uh, measured the, uh, the thrust. Um, and the the head the hadron's distribution with respect to the uh, the thrust um the, this new type of measurements uh uh is uh, sen sensitive to the uh will give access to the uh unpolarized transverse momentum dependent uh, uh fragmentation function as as uh can be seen uh, here uh, additional para uh, uh, parameter um not parameter uh, a variable uh, uh kt. And also uh, star TSSA uh, measurements uh, of the uh, of the uh, hadrons within uh, within a jet um, uh, enable the uh, access to the collinear, uh, which is a polarized TMD um, uh, fragmentation function. Uh, this is uh, the first uh, of, of this kind that uses the jets um, to study the uh, fragmentation functions, um, and and uh, we we can uh, at LHCb we can access uh, collinear uh, fragmentation functions as well as unpolarized uh, TMD fragmentation function uh, by measuring the hadron head, distribution within the C-tape jets um, at, uh, there. 
So uh, the LHCB is, uh, is an ideal um, place to study um, heterogenization using jets. We have, uh, among other things, we have a uh, full uh, jet reconstruction uh, capabil capabilities with a good, excellent track, uh, tracking, uh, uh, as well as uh, uh, ECAL and HCAL calorie mirrors, um, a very uh, good uh, PID uh, between two, uh, two and uh, 100 GV. Um, we can also do um, light core tagging um, as well as heavy core tagging. Uh, Five with, minutes. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, accumulated a lot of uh, data. Uh, so, uh, so, so the quark initiated jets. Um, we uh, we started. Um, so we've started this um, uh, heterogenization with uh, with the quark initiated jets, looking at the Z uh, both Z tag um, uh, production, which is per. per predominantly uh, sensitive to uh, quark initiated jets and, and also the forward kinematics uh, further increases the uh, fraction of light quark jets uh, in particular um, up and down flavor of quarks. Um, we've also measured the uh, production of the Z plus uh, jet, which um, is shown on the, on the right. Uh, the uh, two of the, uh, uh, the simulation uh, uh, describe the uh, data uh, well. And, and so uh, based on that, we've uh, um, measured this uh, uh, heterogeneous variable um, that uh, the three um, classes. So the first is the longitudinal momentum fraction. And the second is the uh, transformers momentum with respect to the Z axis and uh, lastly uh, radio pro profile. And so if we look at the radio prof profile, we can see that the uh, it, it's shown uh, for the different jet PT bins. The the message here is that the greater energy available in higher uh, transverse momentum jet leads to more hadrons produced, mainly um, close to this uh, jet axis. And if we compare our results with the um, Atlas uh, single inclusive uh, jet results, um, we can see uh, we can. Uh, uh, interpret this as uh, um, quark initiated jets um, are much more narrower than the um, gluon initiated jets um, that uh, were measured um, by Atlas. Now, uh, if we uh, compare our results with the uh, uh, Atlas's uh, mid rapidity of uh, photon, photon tech jets, um, we can see that the we can conclude that the difference that uh, were um, observed in the previous page between the LACB and uh, Atlas are due to the difference uh, differences in uh, whether the the um, jet was in, in jets were initiated uh, by quark or one um, because there is a, a good similarity between the two for between the um, photon tech jet and C tech jets uh, results. And so the next step is to uh, do the a full um, two-dimensional uh, two analysis of the uh, uh, of the uh, uh, fragmentation uh, TMD fragmentation function, um, which is uh, as a function of uh, say JT versus Z, and we are we can also do uh, identified um, charge hadron distributions in jets, and then see the um, char uh, also charge sensitive measurements. And this will give us a, a statistical sensitivity to the flavor of the quarks that initiated jets. And we can also do a heavy quark uh, in, uh, tagging, uh, heavy, heavy quark in, uh, initiated jets studies to uh, see the, uh, the um, effects of the he uh, heavy quark mass. And lastly, um, uh, We'll talk, I'll talk about the uh, quarkonia formation a little bit. So the, the heterogeneation mechanisms of the energetic uh, heavy quark into um, cucubar bound state uh, are not very un well understood. Um, the NRQCD, uh, the uh, effective field theory uh, that uh, takes into account the uh, color octet as well as color singlet model um, uh, has been uh, uh, successful in describing a wall data on quarkonia production. But the no theories um, so far exist um, that simultaneously describing their polarization, as you can see on the right hand side, um, as the PT goes high, 
higher. Um, we, are, we, uh, we expect to see uh, full polarization reaching a one, but most of the world data are um, seeing uh, no polarization. Uh, at LSCB, uh, we've also uh, measured the uh, charmonium, um, charmonium production, uh, which is uh, mostly dominated by gluon on gluon. Uh, in the, on the left hand side, you can see the production um, is so well described by uh, NLQCD, but uh, it's, it is no, except, uh, no, no exception that the, uh, the polarization is not described by any of the uh, theory predictions. And so there has been another uh, new approach that uh, looks uh, at the distributions of the headrooms within the jets. Um, so we, if you see on the top plot, um, which is for the prompt JSI distribution, the, uh, the, 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 our uh, LHCB measurements uh, see uh, a very different uh, distribution, a soft, softer distribution than the, uh, what the LO NRQCD um, uh, is, uh, is pre predicting, which is uh, due to understood uh, by the uh, different apartment shower um, uh, that's, that is implemented in the Pythia and, and uh, the uh, actual the NRQCD of uh, the uh, Parkland shower. And the, so, uh, so uh, it's just mentioned that the, uh, we are seeing a good uh, description of the uh, displaced uh, J, uh, JSI, just what I wanted to most often emphasize that this kind of uh, measurements are very important to uh, uh, understand the production me uh, mechanism a little better. Um, so here's the summary. So I am 15 minutes. So I will uh, just uh, give up the floor and uh, see if uh, people can uh, read my summary and um, ask questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you, Sukhyun. Uh, any question? So we have still a couple of minutes. Please raise your hand or uh, leave a question. So let's start with Will. Oh, super, thank you. Um, so this is a, an ill-formed question and, and probably not even that good of one, but I was interested in uh, your discussion about the difference between cork-initiated and gluon-initiated jets. Mm -hmm. um, and in particular, um, I come from the theory side and I have this vague recollection that um, this has sort of been known for a very long time. Uh, so um, I guess it seemed like you were very excited by this result and I wanted to understand what was new about this compared to the old with the context of I don't even really remember the old very well. And so I apologize and, and thank you very much for your insight. So I think the, the, the what's uh, new about this measurement is that you Quantitatively, um, uh, see the see the um, difference uh, between uh, so the if you look at the left uh, plot where I, I uh, compare the um, Atlas Inclusive, which is much uh, it it has uh, more particles that have that have a, a smaller um, C. In, in less particles that have larger Z. So it means that the, uh, the quirk initiated jets uh, produce uh, headrooms that take higher um, momentum fraction of the jet. So it, it, it's, it's quantitatively um, saying that the uh, quirk initiated jets are more collimated that, you know, there's like a lot of studies that, uh, using uh, like machine learning, how they are more collimated than uh, the, the quirk initiated jets are collimated than uh, gluon initi initiated jets. But I think this is kind of this direct com comparisons, uh, quantitative, um, you know, measurements uh, comparing the, the two um, is, is new, I think. Thank you. Yeah, I think that that, my understanding, yeah, now that I think about it, was that sort of the cork versus glue was based on, say, Pythia or other Monte Carlos. And so now you've really nailed it down with data. Wonderful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, yeah, nice talk, Sukhyan. So Thank you. just wanted to ask do, do, this data, do you have it 
uh, like, are you planning on making a similar measurement in like, uh, like, like proton lead or something at the, or do you have any like, like maybe peripheral lead lead if you can identify these in LA? I know you guys can't do central, but do you have data? Because th that would be very interesting to see because uh, at this moment, uh, you might observe small differences in fragmentation functions, uh, basically if, to look at cold nuclear matter effects or things like that. Yeah, we are, um, unfortunately, we are more um, interested in um, uh, constraining the TMD fragmentation functions. So we are looking at um, like higher um, energy, beam energy, uh, also, you know, analyzing like two dimensional um, and stuff like that. Right. So I think it's, it's a good suggestion that uh, if, we, if we have manpower, it would be very interesting to also look into, um, you know, cold nuclear effect as you, as you suggest. Okay, sounds good, thanks. Thank you. So we don't see any further questions. So thank you once again, Sukhyun. Mm -hmm. And we move to our uh, last speaker of this session. So, Javier Merino? Yes. Okay. Yes, let, me, let me share my slides. Sorry. Uh, okay. Okay, can you see this? Yes, I don't think they are still in full screen, but... No, uh, okay, now. <clears throat> yes, now we can see it perfectly, thank you. So you have 20 minutes. I will give you a warning in the last five, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay, so my talk is about measurements of jet substructure and also jet fragmentation using the ATLAS detector. So I will present three measurements in, three measurements in this talk. The first one is the jet fragmentation using charged particles. Then we will describe the measurement of soft drop jet, jet observables. And finally, uh, we will go for the loon jet plane using charged particles. The motivation for these measurements is multiple. First, uh, we have a, a strong sensitivity to pattern shower and the fragmentation models in the Monte Carlo simulation. So we can use these measurements to tune the Monte Carlo. But also, we are able to compare to some theoretical predictions, the geodetic logarithm, and to gain understanding in the jet separation between quarks and gluons, which is interesting not only from the theoretical point of view, but also experimentally to reduce the jet energy scale uncertainties, which affect uh, Higgs measurements, for instance, in both Atlas and CMS. So first we start to describe the jet fragmentation using charged particles. In this analysis, we are selecting events with at least two jets defined with the anti kt algorithm and radius equal to 0.4 with a PT greater than 60 GeV and a line in the central part of the detector. So it is smaller than 2.1. The the digit PT balance is required to be uh, the ratio between the PTs of the living and the subliving jets has to be below 1.5, thus enhancing topologies where two to two uh, processes are dominant. And uh, then we select charged particles within the jets with a PT greater than 50 MeV and it is smaller than 2.5. So then we divide our, our sample of jets in two subsamples, the most central and the most forward uh, among the, the two leading jets. And this is done in order to have a separation between quarks and gluons, because the central jets, as you can see in these plots, are quite more likely to be uh, arising from gluon fragmentation, as you can see in the plot. Uh, this is, these are the, the fraction of gluon jets as a function of the jet PT and the jet pseudo rapidity on the left, and uh, the, as a function of the jet PT for the more central and the more forward. So clearly the more central are more likely to be gluons. Then uh, we use this sample of jets to measure uh, these observables, these four observables. One is the, fir the first is the number of charged particles inside the jet, the momentum fraction of such charged particles, the transfer profile, which is defined as the PT of the charged particle times the sign of the angle between the jet and the charged particle, and the radial profile, which is uh, basically the, the delta R distribution defined as the square root of delta Y squared plus delta phi squared uh, between the charged particle and the jet. 
So in these two plots on example number four, we can see the distribution of the momentum fraction zeta and uh, PT rel. We can see that uh, for the momentum fraction, we see a misdescription by Sherpa 2.1. We will see this is the, not, not the only variable that Sherpa does not describe. And uh, for the for PT rel, we see that the description is, is much better for all the Monte Carlos, actually. This is for a selected uh, PT bin in the JPT. So then uh, we also study the average values of such observables as a function of the JPT. So here, as an example, we are showing the, num the average number of charged particles as a function of the JPT and also the average radial profile as a function of the JPT. We can see that for R, clearly uh, the, the, the Sherpa Monte Carlo is not describing the data and it is showing a systematically broader radial profile, meaning that the, the average value of R is, is larger in Sherpa than in the data, while the other Monte Carlos are doing uh, a much better job here. Uh, so now on slide number six, we go to the to the distributions to extract the distributions of, of quarks and gluons. And as I said before, uh, we use the more central and more forward jet samples to do this. And here we are plotting the uh, number of charged particles, the average number of charged particles, and the average radial profile for these two sub samples. We can see that for the more central some for the more central jets, which are more likely to be a gluon, uh, the average number of charged particles is larger than the for, for the more forward, which are more likely to be quarks. For the radial profile, it is also the case. The, the, the average value of R is larger for the more central data because gluon jets are typically wider due to the, the higher color factors in QCD for gluons. So, okay, we now can uh, extract the quark and gluon profiles themselves. So to do this, we have two methods. First of all, I will describe a model dependent method, which consists simply in uh, solving a system of equation, a linear system of equations um, with coefficients which are given by the Monte Carlo. This is why this is model dependent. And these coefficients are evaluated in, in PIFIA. These are simply the fraction of quark and gluon jets in the forward and in the, in, the, in the central samples. And when solving the system of equations, we can obtain values for the beams of these distributions. And this is what we are plotting on, uh, on the left-hand side plot. So here is the distribution, the, 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 the extracted distribution for quarks and gluons uh, of the number of charged particles. And we can see that typically gluons have a much larger value for the number of charged particles. And on the right hand side, we are plotting the average number of charged particles compared to both the quark and gluon uh, subsamples in the Monte Carlo, but also to the next to next to next to leading order perturbative QCD prediction, which is fitted using an anchor beam, which is uh, shown in the, with, with an arrow here. Because the normalization is not predicted, essentially, this is the, this is the reason why. Okay, uh, we also see that PCI is overestimating the, the number of charged particles for gluon jets. Uh, while for quark jets, the description is, is, is better. So another way to estimate the quark and gluon fractions is uh, to use the so-called jet topics. And uh, we have these two definitions. The first one uh, is, the point of this is that uh, they are model independent, not as the, as the previous method. And the, the quark-like jet topic is defined as in the first equation, while the gluon-like jet topic is defined as in the second equation. So these are, the point is that these are universal, uh, so any anyone can uh, can do this, and um, they are model independent, as I said. So here we can see in these two plots the distribution of the number of charged particles for the two topics compared to the quark and gluon distributions. So what we can see is that the topic one agrees really well with uh, with the P, with the PCA prediction for quarks and also with the data, but uh, the second topic since mm, this is not exactly the gluon profile, but rather a combination of quarks and gluons, the second topic does not agree with the, with the gluon distribution in PCIA, but it does agree with the, with the data and the Monte Carlo. So then we show on the right-hand side the value of the number of charged particles, the average value of this uh, as a function of the JPT. So again, uh, topic one agrees well with the, with the data and the simulation, while topic two, the more dual-like, does not. 
So we move quickly to another analysis, which is the soft drop gap observables. Um, here we are selecting gadget events selected with anti-KT algorithm and radius equal to 0.8. And also we are selecting well-balanced events. So PT1 over PT2 is more than 1.5. Uh, then we have two inputs here for jet substructure, the clusters used to cluster the, the jets and the tracks also that are contained into the jet. The tracks are selected with a PT greater than 500 MeV. Then the constituents, either tracks or clusters, are reclustered using the Cambridge Agen algorithm. And the last step of the clustering is undone. So it produces two subjects, subject one and subject two. Then these two subjects are evaluated using the so-called soft drop condition, which has been explained in previous talks also. And uh, if this value of the minimum of PT1 and PT2 over the total is greater than CCAT times this uh, delta R to the power of beta, then we remove the lower PT subject and uh, we iterate until the condition is, is fulfilled. So once this is done and, and we have uh, the groomed jet, which is the, the jet fulfilling in which the, the two subjects fulfill this condition, the measurements are performed uh, for several variables. One is the dimensionless mass, which is essentially the logarithm of this, the square of the mass divided by the square of the PT. And uh, we do this for several values of CCAT and uh, beta. CCAT is fixed to 0 0.1, while beta is scanned and uh, its values are 0, 1, and 2. So here we are showing the value of the dimensionless mass, uh, the distribution of it, uh, comparing be between the data and several Monte Carlos, Pifia, Sherpa, and Herwig. And um, what we see is that for beta equal to 0, which is the plot on the left, the agreement uh, between the Monte Carlos is better than for beta equal to two, as, uh, as we can see on the plot. Especially Herwig uh, shows differences with the data in the lower tail of the row distribution on the right-hand side plot. Another example that we measure is uh, the splitting scale, which is basically the fraction of momentum carried by the emission uh, over the sub by the subleading subject in the, in the subject pair. And uh, here we are showing these, uh, these distributions for this variable. As before, we compare the data with PCS Sherpa and Herwig, and we also see here that for beta equal to zero, the agreement with the Monte Carlo is better than for beta equal to two. But also, it is important to know that higher values of beta are implying larger non perturbative effects, so they are um, more difficult to model in the Monte Carlo. And finally, we also measure the angular distance between the two subjects fulfilling the soft drop condition, which is basically the square root of the delta y over delta, delta y square plus delta phi square. And uh, here again, the agreement for beta equal to zero, it is better than for beta equal to two. So we also have comparisons with analytical predictions containing non perturbative corrections. Also, and uh, for instance, we have leading order plus next to next to leading logarithm and next to next to leading logarithm only, which are uh, based on soft collinear effective theory, described in these two papers. But also, we have next to leading order plus next to leading logarithm, much using an object plus plus. And uh, on these plots, we see the comparison of the data to these predictions. So on the left hand side, we have the values for beta equal to zero. And on the right hand side, we have the values for beta equal to two. So as I said, um, greater beta means larger number of effects, as you can see here. Uh, so it is not surprising that uh, the prediction, the red prediction on the right, which does not contain number of correction, does not agree with the data in the region where the number of effects are larger, which are the lower tails of the, of the mass distribution. Uh, then, uh, for the next to next to leading logarithm, the sum predictions, the agreement is, is, is good in general. And uh, we also make a comparison between the, the observables measured using tracks and the same observables missing, measured using clusters. So, here uh, I am presenting the distributions for rho for beta equal to zero and beta equal to two between the, the track-based data and the calorimeter-based data. So we can see that overall beta equal to zero is 
presenting a better agreement between the track observable and the calorimeter observable, mainly because uh, this has lower sensitivity also to uh, non perturbative correction. Finally, we can also use this data to extract quark and gluon distributions, just as we did before. So here we use the system of equations method. And uh, what, we, what we see is that as expected, the gluons are typically more massive, have a larger mass, and also are wider than quark jets. So in these two plots, we are comparing uh, the quark and gluon distributions to the, to the TCA prediction for quarks and gluons only. And uh, we can see that the, the, the raw distributions is more peaked uh, for gluons. It picks up higher values for gluons, while the quark distributions is flatter or even peaking at lower values, meaning that the gluons are more massive than, than quark. And finally, uh, we have also a measurement of the Lunjet plane using size particles. This uh, measurement is done by selecting diet events uh, with the anti critical algorithm and radius equal to 2.4. And as in the other two measurements, the PP of a living jet over the period of a living is required to be smaller than 1.5 to ensure that the event is well balanced. Then we are uh, selecting tracks within a distance of delta R equal to 0.4 of the jet axis. And these tracks are reclustered using the Cambridge algebra. So then the clustering history is examined. And uh, all the splittings in the history of the, of the shower are obtained. And these two variables, the fraction of momentum carried by the emission over the total, and the delta r, the, the angular opening between the emission and the core, is uh, are measured. And one is plotted against the other for all the splittings in the shower history. So uh, this is what is called the loop plane, and it's what is depicted on the, on the plots here. The plot on the left shows the regions in which we are sensitive, more sensitive or less sensitive to different physics effects. So for instance, the hard and wide angle uh, part is the one for high delta R and high C. So as the, the axes are the logarithm of one over these variables, uh, this is shown in the, in the lower left corner. Then it has a diagonal, which is dominated by non perturbative effects. And over this diagonal, uh, this is where non perturbative effects are, 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 are shown. So uh, the bottom on the right shows the unfolded uh, distribution of the, of the loom plane for uh, the Atlas data. So on the next slide, number 17, we are showing the sensitivity that this uh, variable has to several physics. Uh, physics. So first, uh, the part on shower. Uh, we do this study by taking the ratio between two part on showers in, in Herwig. So we take the ratio between the angle order part on shower and the dipole implemented in the, in the same matrix element. And what we see is that indeed the difference comes in the lower left corner, which is where the hard wide angle emissions typically from the button shower are important. <clears throat> and then on the right hand side um, plot, we, we see the difference between two different hadronization models, the string model and the, and the cluster model implemented in, in Sherpa. So if we take the ratio of these two, we see that the effect comes at the diagonal of the loom plane, as I said before, this diagonal where the KT defined as uh, the angle times the fraction of momentum carried by the emission uh, is of the order of lambda QCD. <coughs> and hence, uh, this is why the, the, this difference between the harmonization model is shown along the diagonal. Okay, <coughs> so. Uh, we also show the Lunjet plane projections over uh, horizontal and vertical slices. So in these two plots in the slide number 18, we are showing the data compared to several different Monte Carlo predictions, including uh, PCA, POHEC plus PCA, to test also the importance of the matrix element calculation, whether it's leading order or next to leading order. Also, the importance of the fragmentation model. So we use the same Sherpa with different fragmentation schemes. 
and also the importance of the parton shower. We use two different hero examples, one with angular de parton shower and the other with the light de parton shower. So what we see is that uh, essentially no Monte Carlo prediction is providing an accurate description of all the regions of the loop plane. And uh, Herwig with the angular order parton shower is giving the best overall agreement, while uh, both Herwig models are differing most for hard emissions and wide angles, as I, as I have shown in the previous, in the previous slide. Also, Pohek plus Pythia is differing with Pythia for the hardest wide angle emissions, where uh, the, the order at which we evaluate the perturbative expansion of the matrix element is relevant whether the gluon comes or the third jet, the, or the gluon emission is coming from the, from the matrix element or from the parton shower. So in summary, we have presented three different analyses uh, sensitive to, to several Monte Carlo effects and, and several physics effects, including uh, jet fragmentation using charged particles, also observables for jets grouped using the soft drop algorithm, and the loop jet plane, which is the splitting fraction versus the angular opening for the clustering system. Uh, we can extract quark and gluon like jet distributions using the differences between more central and more forward jets. And uh, we present comparison with different Monte Carlo predictions over a large phase space. Uh, I would like also to know that we have uh, this data publicly available and we have rivet routines available for these uh, three measurements that I presented. So anyone can make any comparison with their favorite Monte Carlo with their favorite parameter. And uh, we will present uh, more, more analysis on jet substructure as very soon, hopefully. So stay tuned because there will be more. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Javier, for this uh, amazing collection of, of results and for this very nice talk. Uh, so questions, uh, so again, put your uh, hand raised on Zoom or leave a comment on the chat. And we start with Hagaf. Yeah, very nice results, Javier. So we've been following this for a while now. Uh, so I wanted to ask, so you, you, you showed this nice quark gluon using the topics, uh, but, but Atlas already done before the selection with the gamma jets and di jets, right? Or like Z jets and di jets. So, or di jets in the forward region versus di jets in the mid repetitive region. So, do you have uh, the ability to, you know, kind of compare how this these topics are working with respect to the selection based on like event topologies, like you know, Z jets in the mid repetitive versus di jets at forward repetitive. Both of those should give you quarks, right? So, do you see like similar results with those? Well, uh, I don't think uh, these topics have been measured in other topologies other than, than digits. I think this is the only analysis containing this comparison. But of course, it would be very interesting to measure it, for instance, in C plus jets or gamma plus jets, where the, where the quark content is much larger than in, than in multi jets. But it has not been tested yet, I believe. I see. OK, yeah, that would be very interesting to see. Uh, Indeed, yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, any further comments, questions? If there's no one else, then I can I can ask another one. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, can you go to your slide with the with the uh, projections from the loon plane? Yeah. Yeah. Here. So, if I look at the uh, delta R, the the right panel, right. So. The largest differences are sort of happening in the so in the small range, but rather uh, kind of small delta R, right? No, this On is the, the great delta R because the, we are, what we are plotting here is the logarithm of R over delta R. So this is inversely proportional to delta R. I know this may be a bit confusing, but the differences come at low values of the x-axis, which are- ah, That's what I mean. So the, it's large delta R, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, so this is exactly what I was talking about, right? And at star, because lower PT, the jets are broader. So here, is there a way in which you can select a subsample of these jets and identify 
what their actual splitting is or like are we like are you isolating here glue on to glue to glue glue splittings and that not being modeled by monte carlo like that's that's my question sorry I, i'm not sure i understand so if we are uh, make i mean so so okay so let's take the left hand side of the x axis so those are wide angle splittings right yes yes and you have very high jet pt and these are integrated or all splits. So it's not necessarily the first split, so it could be the second and third. So you could be looking at different partonic splittings here. Right. Right, so is there a way to identify uh, which splitting actually breaks? Because that one you can't tell from this figure, right? Uh, right, well, of course one, one can do many studies with this because as you said, we, are, we include all the splittings here we could use uh, the first one or the second one or the first two. I mean, so th there, are, there are several ways of doing this. But for this first measurement, uh, we have included all of them. Uh, it would probably be also interesting to see how the first uh, splitting in the, in the clustering history is done because that would be the hardest splitting. Is that what you're referring? No, I, I'm actually referring to the ones, to the ones after that. I want to know how the second and the third and the fourth and so on actually are differed and because they are different partonic splittings, right? Yes, yeah, so that would require further study because uh, at the moment this is this is not this has not been studied, but it would be interesting as well. Yeah, okay, thank you. Okay, okay. thank you. Uh, if there are no further questions, once again, thank you, Javier, for this very nice talk. Okay, and we close the session here. The next session will be in roughly half an hour about heavy flavor. And so once again, thank you all for participating in this session and hope to see you again soon. Bye. Thanks so much, Liliana. Thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye.